think the monkey, I can't see the monkey now. Can you see it now? That's heavy, just went. Doesn't like the light. Yeah. Mm. Oh, look at that. Oh, oh, look, look at, at that. Oh, look at that. Oh, look at that. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Wow, it's so long. <laughs> Holy cow. Just keeps coming. Ah. <laughs> you must eat that by your leaf. <laughs> <laughs> Hold it from lower. Do I have to? <laughs> no, no, that is a piranha. Is that a piranha? Is that a piranha? That's a piranha. Holy that like a dog for a baby. What <laughs> animal it's magnet? A bit bigger. That's a, I am an animal size. magnet. I told Pretty much, you. Uh, oh, size. and the dog is okay. Maybe. Oh my god! It's not gonna get you. It's not gonna get you. <laughs> yeah. They've got steak over there. Chicken. Yes. Yeah, we do. Oh, this is gonna be good. Okay. Oh, okay. All right, here we go. Oh, Everyone. Yeah. We're going to watch him feed the... Oh, look at him. Whoa! Whoa. Somebody get that. I got it. I, I got, got it. it I don't know how well I got it, but... Now I doubt what he wanted. I've got it. He says, I'm, that's what I came for. <laughs> Buenas tardes.
Buenos dias, friends, and welcome to another adventure with Sarah. And today we are exploring some of the lost cities of Peru. Uh, we're going to be exploring an archaeological site today and exploring a part of the Andes, the markets, the colors, the sounds. It's a beautiful place, so come along with me for a great adventure. Andiamo! I'm here today with a local tour guide named Neil, who is going to take us on a wonderful tour of this archaeological site, and I was hoping you could tell us a little bit about it. Well, uh, we are here in Ollantaytambo site, uh, located in the uh, town of Ollantaytambo, and we are approximately at 2,800 meters above sea level, and this is an amazing place with uh, examples of um, architecture for a uh, agriculture for administrative place, a religious place, and uh, we are about to do this uh, tour with a with a group with Sara uh, for about an hour, an hour and a half, and uh, we learn a lot about it, and uh, we'll definitely be amazed. With, All right, with so you got to help me say it though. I don't know how to All say right. it. It's called O Jantai Tambo. O Jantai Tambo. O Jantai Tambo. O Jantai Tambo. In Peru, we're close to Cusco. Um, so Peru is a fascinating destination because it's sort of like it, the ancient Greece of South America, isn't it? It's got mm -hmm. all the ancient sites. Peru is a, it's an amazing place, not only because of the diversity uh, in flora, fauna, but also uh, the cultural diversity. And um, it is a, definitely a must uh, to come place uh, in the world. And uh, it has Ollantaytambo, Sacsayhuaman, Machu Machu Picchu, and a lot of other uh, pre-Inca uh, sites all over the country. And uh, you are very welcome to come and with Adventures with Sarah. <laughs> Excellent. So let's go explore Ollantay Tambo. Ollantay Tambo. <laughs> Ollantay Tambo. Oh, yeah. We're going to go explore that together. So, vámonos. Vámonos. All right. Here in Ollantaytambo, we are learning a lot about uh, Inca magic and uh, religion and philosophical ideas, and especially about their agriculture. And our local guide just told us a wonderful story I wanted to share with you about the mountain just behind us. So the people here in this valley, there's actually three valleys, believed in a god called Wirecocha, who was the god of all things. But the god needed help. He couldn't do everything. So he created another god called Tanuba. And Tanuba is actually here with us. I'm looking right at him. So if you take a look into this cliffside, let's go in tight. Can you see a face? There's a face right there. It's an old man with his long beard and his nose. And he's got a hump on his back. And he's kind of walking through valley. Now on his back there's a building. In that building uh, they used to store something because uh, Tanuba's role in the Inca religion was to be the one who would help with civilization, help to develop civilization, and the most important thing to develop civilization in this area was to develop agriculture. And in fact the terrace I'm standing on right now would have been used to grow all kinds of things, quinoa, corn, uh, all the different typical Inca uh, varieties of crops. So what was Tanuba's role? His role was to bring the seeds and protect the seeds. So this ancient culture decided to build a, a sort of a god in the side of their mountain and on his back was their granary where they would store all the different kinds of seeds. You can see the slots there. That was also strategically important because you get in a lot of wind. It's already windy here and uh, you could keep the seeds dry, keep them up above the, the floor of the valley where it could be wet and flooded. Uh, so Tanuba, this god here, it looks like he's strolling through the valley, protecting all of the agriculture and the crops uh, from damage. So fantastic little piece of uh, mythology from the Inca culture uh, that was just given to us by our wonderful local guide. And here we go, we're gonna continue on up. Some of you know that I was an architect in a past life, and one of the things I admire most about the architecture here is this. 
ashlar masonry. This is masonry that has been cut and stacked perfectly and has no mortar. Although our guide just told us that they had a sort of mortar, it was sort of a paste they could put between the stones, which would melt the stones and make them perfect. So have a look at how wonderfully perfect the joints are. This kind of craftsmanship, I don't even think you find in the modern world. Look at that little curve there. And what's particularly amazing is that this stone comes from really, really far away. Uh, so the, when you see the ashlar masonry like that, usually means it was a temple because the other houses and things, as you can see up here, are just stacked stone. But all, no mortar, just stacked sort of masonry. And those cut ones are just so beautiful. The, the craftsmanship is really amazing. The Incas were really something else. If you can imagine, these terraces behind me would have been thriving during the Inca times, and it all ended with the conquistadors in the 1500s, the mid-1500s. Their arrival heralded the end of the Incas, and unfortunately, uh, their numbers dwindled to the point where we don't really know enough, and there's no written language, so a lot of this stuff is just sort of guessing and archaeologists' work. Uh, so that's all for today from uh, the ancient archaeological sites here in Peru. We're just outside of Cusco, and tomorrow we're heading to Machu Picchu, so more adventures ahead. We'll see you then. Vamanos!